God is ready to move on believe. Yes. Amen. Uh, for him to move in our lives, we we, we gotta have a desire for him to move in our lives. Right, right. Yes. Uh, yes. Or we need need a desire for him to move in our lives. Go to see what you want and how God yeah. right, to yeah. worship him. Want to go to the book of Revelations? Go to the 17th chapter. Start at the 12th verse. Revelation 17 and 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest were ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. And these have one mind that shall give their power and strength unto the beast. And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For He is Lord of lords and King of kings. All right. And they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. And they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. Let's praise Him one more time. God, we love you. God, we praise you, Lord, for your spirit in this place tonight. Come down in the mighty way, God, and anoint us and use us, God, in our hearts and ears to receive your word. We'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with Him are called, chosen, <coughs> And faithful, and that's how of my message tonight is sitting called, chosen, and faithful. Call, chosen, and faithful. There you go. Praise God. All right. Praise God. <coughs> they, 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 when we understand, you know, God calls you. Yep. Hmm? Okay. I mean, no, God calls you. It's the Spirit that draws you. It's a, yes. it's a, it's a calling right. from God that draws you. Uh -huh. So, so. If I'm called of God, then to be chosen, what makes me chosen of God? Amen. Well, when I'm called, I become obedient. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen. O obedience to the Word of God makes me chosen of God. Amen. Huh? And listen, being obedient, see, after I'm called and I become obedient, then I'm chosen. That, that being obedient also makes me faithful. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. To be obedient that, that, to, to God, that's to be faithful to God. Obedience simply means uh, trustworthy yes, uh -huh. or reliable. Yeah. Okay. Are you a trustworthy or reliable servant of God tonight? <coughs> Those that followed Him, the Bible said, they were called, they were chosen, and they were faithful. We turn to Revelation's 19th chapter. Revelation's 19. <coughs> and verse 5 says, And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship, and he said, See thou do it not out of thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he did judge and make war. His flames were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. 
and he was clothed with vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. All right. Amen. And his name is called the Word of God. Come on now. Praise God. Right. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Right. Right. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. Now, what we're we doing, we're going back. If you go back, they were following him in chapter 17. And those that they were following him were called and chosen All right. and faithful. Thank you. And they said, the lamb, the bride's wife, is dressed in fine linen, arrayed in fine and clean in white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And now we find, and, and the armies which followed him upon white horses, were clothed in fine linen, white and clean. They were clothed in, which is the righteousness of the saints. In other words, the saints were following him. So, we, so, so if I want to be one of the army or in the army of God, one of those that comes back with Him, right. when He comes to execute judgment upon this world and, and, and fight against the beast and the Antichrist, if I want to be part of that, then I've got to be called, I've got to be chosen, and then I've got to be faithful. Right. Amen. Right. Huh? Come on now. If I want to be a part of that. So look, if we go to the book of Matthew, Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I prepare my dinner, and my oxen, my families are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Amen. Sounds like, sounds like the way God pleads with us sometimes. That's it. Amen. Hmm? But they made light of it. Went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. This said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Amen. The ones that were bidden, one, you know, they were called, but they weren't worthy. Hmm. They'd been called. Right. But they weren't worthy. Why? Because they were not obeying the call to come. Amen. They were not obedient to the Word of God. And he said, Go ye therefore to the highways, and in many as ye, find, as ye shall find bid to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not a wedding, on a wedding garment. He said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? He was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take, a, take him away, cast him into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I read all that to read this in verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. And we go back to Revelations. Those that followed him were called, chosen, and faithful. Mm -hmm. If you begin to look at, and, and, and uh, I think Brother Zach mentioned this other night, if you begin to look, you go back, uh, as Jesus began his ministry, began to walk through, he went by along by the seashore uh, to some old fishermen, and he began to call them from their old life, right. began to call them into a new life. Come and follow me, and I'll make right. it. Fishers of men, so he called them. Amen. The Bible said they left their nets immediately and they began to follow him. They became obedient. And because they became obedient to the to the calling that God had placed upon their heart, they began to be the chosen one. Right. Mm -hmm. So many are called, but few are chosen. If I'm called and I refuse to obey the call of God. 
Then I'm marked off as one of the chosen. Uh -oh. Amen. Uh -oh. hmm? If I want to be part of his army one day, I'm going to have to be called, chosen, and faithful. Right. Amen. I'm going to have to be trustworthy. I'm going to have to be reliable. Yeah. Come on. He's going to have to be able to count on me. Right. Yes, sir. So look. He called his disciples from their old life. And they became willing to follow him. They became willing to follow him. We find another story in the book of Acts. The ninth chapter. And you know the story about the apostle Paul who was Saul at this particular time. And he was a persecutor of the church. Had letters to put him in prison. Hmm? Amen. He, he had him beat. He had him killed. He had him stalled. Huh? He had him thrown in prison. Right. But God called him one day. Amen. Right? Yeah. God called him one day and said, Saul, Saul, I persecute you, Saul, and it's hard for you to keep against the spirit. He said, Who art thou, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He told him where to go, and if you told him what he ought to do. But look, look, in Acts, the ninth chapter, verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I've heard by many of, the, of this man. Ananias had heard of Paul, Saul. He knew what he'd do. He knew how he was. He knew how mean he was. Yes, sir. Huh? But look what he said. He said, Lord, I, I've heard it. I've heard it of this man. How much evil he has done to thy saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to find all that call him by name. Look what the Lord said. Mm. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Amen. He's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. There's something, there's something about it. There's something about being called. What what makes a lot of people reluctant to step on out and be no, disobedient. Nobody likes to step out of their comfort zone. Right. Amen. That's right. Hmm? Amen. I got, I, got, I got to thinking about this. No, nobody wants, sometimes wants to step out of their comfort zone. Huh? Paul, he said, I'm going to show Paul how many things he's got to suffer for my name's sake. Oh, Paul said, you know, that don't sound too good. But he was, he was called, and then he was obedient and willing. He was a chosen vessel. Yes, he was. He had to step away from a life that he had been in to another life that God was calling right. him right. in. Right. Come on now. And became one of the greatest evangelists of all time. See, 1 Peter 2 and 9 simply says this. But you're a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood. He's talking about the Gentiles if you go back and study before and after. Yeah. He's talking about the Gentiles. You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. But you're a chosen generation. Amen. Called. He said, called to do what? You're peculiar here that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Right. That's what he chose you for. Right. He chose you to worship him. He chose you to praise him. Right. He yes. chose you to be a peculiar people. Yes, he did. chosen generation. A chosen generation. 
God in these last days raised up a chosen generation. Yes, to show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Hmm. First Timothy 1 and 12. And I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not, oh, I'm about, matter of fact, I'm about to finish. I may even break my record from this morning. <laughs> but, but look at this. First Timothy 1 and 12, Paul wrote, he said, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, or in other words, made him able, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. Huh? Counted me faithful. He said, I thank Jesus. He counted me faithful. He enabled me. He made me able to do what He called me to do. He counted me faithful. Putting me into the ministry. I think in one place, one of the writers wrote to those who are called to be saints or a follower of Christ. So you've got a calling on your life. Amen. Hmm? Stay obedient so you can be one of the chosen ones. Because right, right. many are called, but few are chosen. Right. And stay faithful. He said, You stay faithful even unto death, and I'll yes. give you a crown of life. All right. Yes, Lord. Lord. Praise oh. God. <clears throat> Praise God. But look, can you be counted among the faithful? Now, I went back to this. I, I began to think, you know, it, 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 to, to, be, to be called out. Abraham was called out of his home country, called away from his family into a land he knew nothing about, but he was called. He'd been called. He had to go. Uh, he became the father of the faithful. Faithful Abraham. We talk about faithful Abraham. Why? Because when he was called, he was willing to go. Right. See, walk, walking, walking by faith and not by sight Sometimes will take us out of our comfort zone. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Hmm? There it is. Walking. Walking by faith and not by sight will take us out of our comfort zone. Even though we've been called. And even though we've been chosen. And it? we're doing our best to be faithful. But God, this is so uncomfortable. I've never done this before. I've never been there before. I've never, oh, no. I've never walked like that before. Come on. But I want you to think of one thing. And we, we often think about Peter walking up on the water. And the Lord called him to come. Lord, if it be, if it be you, bid me to come to you on the water. He said, well, come. Come on. I said that Peter walked on the water to go to Jesus. Yes, it did. But look, look what happened. There were the, the, the disciples had gotten into the ship. There were twelve of them, weren't there? Twelve, twelve disciples. That means eleven of them never experienced walking on the water because they was afraid to get out of the boat. Right. Amen. That's right. Hmm. They never got to experience. There, there, there's some things in the Lord that some will never experience because to get there, they'd have to come out of the cup. Come on, come on, come on, they'd have to step out of the boat. Come on. Amen. Help us, Lord. Peter, the rest, the rest of his life could look at him and say, yeah, but I walked over the water. Right. <laughs> huh? So how many things will we never experience in the Lord? Mm. Simply because we're afraid to step out of the boat. Mm. Or step out of our comfort zone. Amen. Hmm? Even though walking by faith sometimes requires us to step out of our comfort zone. Mm. But if I'm called right, and chosen and faithful that means I'm going to do whatever God asks me to do. 
whatever he believes me to do. See, see a, lot, a lot of people, and, and I can understand, people that's never been inside a, a Pentecostal church the way we worship. I can understand people coming in, may, or I try to, but I was raised in it. You know what? About the only thing that bothers me is when people don't worship. Right. Come on now. Right. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, but a, lot of, a lot of people are afraid to step out of their comfort zone into right. that zone of worship. Bless him, Lord. And because of that, they never get to experience some of the blessings right. of God yes. and feel the tremendous power of God yes. because right. they won't step out of the right. boat and walk right. in the water. Thank you, well, yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? I, I, I teased a guy one time. Several years ago, when I passed it here the first time, if I called his name, most of you would know him. He walked in back there on homecoming. And uh, uh, I was teaching him about it. It was his first time we had a cut across the church. And, and he was supposed to be a brave man. I mean, you know, he was supposed to be a big guy. Been in all kind of, I guess, uh, situations. <laughs> because of the profession that he was in. And he come in and I said, well, I, I got fun up there. I said, now, don't, don't get scared. Don't worry about it. You know, you just go in our make yourself a home. home. And I said, I hold off the doors behind you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> but see, it, people become uncomfortable when they, you know, when they get out of their comfort zone. Right. Listen, we've got to learn to step out by faith. Amen. Step out by faith. Get out of, Peter got out of the boat by faith. Although he did let the storm around him begin to distract him, he still walked on the water. Yes, he did. Hmm? Amen. Because chosen and faithful. When they were called out, they had to step out of the comfort zone. Right. See, see, those disciples had been used to fishing every day. Going out there, throwing their nets right. out, fishing. Right. That, that was their life. That was what they were comfortable with. That was their living. The Bible said when Jesus said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men, they laid down their nets and began to follow him. What a change in their life. What a change. Called out of their comfort zone. Hmm? Don't miss anything that God has for you because you're afraid to step out of the boat or out of your comfort zone. Because one of these days we want to be following Him, riding up all those white houses, right. being part yes. of the army of God. Called, chosen, and faithful. Count us among the faithful. Amen. Yes. Lord. Count us among the faithful. That's all I'm saying. See, some people, uh, they're, they're, they're not comfortable uh, uh, because they're not used to it. Of, of lifting their hands and raising right. their hands. Some are not comfortable with clapping their hands because they're not used to it. We could, we could go on and on and on and get on in there of things that people are not comfortable with. But if we walk by faith, when we walk by faith in our walk with God, sometimes God's going to call us out of our comfort zone. Let's worship him tonight as they say.